After your brief introduction to the new 2.7, 3.2, and 3.5 liter engines in the October program, you may be a little apprehensive about working on them. Well, you shouldn't be. The 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines are based on the 3.5 liter engine used previously. The 2.7 liter engine, although it is all new, is also really not difficult to work on. However, when working on any of these engines, having the correct information and the proper tools can make all the difference. In this month's Master Tech, we're going to help provide you with that information by first looking at the general features of both engines and similar lower end features. Then we'll look at lower and front end features of the 2.7 liter engine in particular, including primary timing chain removal and installation. After looking at 2.7 liter engine upper end features, we'll go on to discuss features of the 3.2 liter and 3.5 liter engines. This month's reference book contains additional information about engine availability and general engine specifications, so be sure to refer to it. The 2.7, 3.2, and 3.5 liter engines have a number of common features. Like the engines they replace, the new engines all have a north-south orientation in the engine compartment. Unlike previous engines, all the new engines use an aluminum block with cast iron cylinder liners. Although all of the engines use overhead cams, the 2.7 liter engine uses separate cams to actuate the intake and exhaust valves in each cylinder bank while the 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines use a single cam for each cylinder bank. It's important to keep in mind that none of these engines is freewheeling and that proper valve timing is critical to avoid valve to piston contact. The new engines have similar cooling system features which are different from the features on the previous engines. The thermostat on the 2.7 liter engine and that used on the 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines are located at the block's coolant inlet instead of the outlet as on previous engines. Because of this, both thermostats are designed to open at 180 degrees instead of the higher temperatures used with outlet side thermostats. Another cooling system feature is the use of a coolant pressure and recovery bottle. This two chamber bottle has a pressure side and an overflow chamber to allow coolant recovery. You'll notice that the recovery chamber is usually empty during normal operation. On the fuel and ignition side, you'll notice that all of the engines use single throttle bodies. All of the engines also use a coil on plug ignition system in which each spark plug has an individual coil directly above it. You'll learn more about this new ignition system in a future Master Tech program. In October's Master Tech, you learn that the 2.7 liter engine uses spark plugs with tapered seats, while the plugs on the 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines use gaskets. With both these plugs, torque is critical during spark plug installation, so be sure to refer to the service manual for the spark plug tightening procedure and for torque specifications. Now let's turn our attention to some similar lower end features of the 2.7, 3.2, and 3.5 liter engines. To minimize flexing, all of the engines have a structural collar that is bolted to the oil pan and transmission. To avoid damaging this collar or the oil pan during collar installation, it's important to use the tightening sequence detailed in the service manual. A structural oil pan and windage tray also increase stiffness on all three engines. The edge molded rubber gaskets for the oil pan and for other engine components have a metal backbone which provides superior sealing by precisely controlling gasket compression. As a result, there is less of a gap between components and fasteners maintain their torque better. The new gaskets minimize the need for sealant at mating surfaces. On the 2.7 liter engine, you need to apply Mopar silicone rubber adhesive sealant at only two spots where the oil pan gasket and timing cover gasket meet. On the 3.2 and 3.5, you'll need to apply sealant where the oil pan meets the block and oil pump housing in the front and where the pan meets the block and rear seal retainer at the back of the engine. All of the engines support the crankshaft with four main bearings, with six bolts for each main bearing cap. The main bearings are numbered from the front of the engine to the back. 
all engines use loose thrust washers, which are installed in the block after crankshaft installation. On the 2.7 liter engine, they are installed on the number three main bearing. On the 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines, the thrust washers are located at the number two main bearing. To determine which main bearing inserts are used on a particular main bearing journal, you'll need to become familiar with the main bearing select fit procedure. The procedure involves using the numbers on the lower edge of the block near the oil pan mating surface and numbers and letters on the rearmost crankshaft counterweight. Numbers ranging from 1 to 3 are used on the 2.7 liter engine, while the 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines use the letters A, B, and C. Comparing these numbers to those in the chart in the service manual enables you to determine which of five main bearing sizes is used on a particular main bearing. For example, suppose the number for the number one bearing is two on the block and two on the crankshaft counterweight. In that case, the main bearing grade is the standard size. The main bearing grade is also marked on the new bearing inserts to facilitate replacement. Another similarity in the lower end of these engines is that the oil pump is driven by the front end of the crankshaft and that you can access the oil pump relief valve after removing the oil pan. Next, we're going to look at some features of the 2.7 liter engine. But before we do, try this review question. On the 2.7 liter engine, the thrust washers are located at which main bearing? A, one, B, two, C, three, or D, four? The answer is C, three. The thrust washers are located at the number two main bearing on the 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines. At this point, let's take a look at some specific features on the lower and front end of the 2.7 liter engine. When installing the rear main oil seal retainer, use special tool 8225 to make sure the retainer is aligned properly. Later on, we'll see how you can use the opposite side of this same tool on 3.2 and 3.5 liter engines. The 2.7 liter engine piston and connecting rod assemblies also have some features which you should be aware of during service. An F above the piston pin boss and an arrow on top of the piston must be toward the front of the engine during installation. The oil squirt hole on the connecting rod must face the major thrust side of the block. To determine the major thrust side of the 2.7 and other V-block engines that rotate clockwise, use the left hand rule. Standing at the back of the engine, point the forefinger of your left hand toward the front and point your thumb up to indicate the top of the engine. Your middle finger points towards the right, which indicates the major thrust side. Together with the piston orientation markings, knowing the correct squirt hole orientation can be helpful in determining whether the piston is correctly assembled to the connecting rod. On the 2.7, 3.2, and 3.5 liter engines, this should not be much of a concern, since the piston and connecting rod are replaced as an assembly. On 2.7 liter engine pistons, notice that the connecting rod was fractured during manufacturing to form the connecting rod cap. The connecting rod cap bolts are captive fasteners, but since the bolts should only be torqued a limited number of times, they can be removed and replaced. To avoid damaging the cylinder bore, the crankshaft journal, or the cap itself, use special tool guide studs 8189 when removing and installing the pistons. As always, with a fractured rod cap, it's important to make sure you mark the cap so you can install it in the original position. Do not mark the caps by stamping them. Use a marker or paint to avoid damaging them. The front end of the 2.7 liter engine also has a number of unique features that you'll need to be aware of during service. In an earlier MasterTech program,